it's very difficult to really understand what's going on. Uh, it's hard. I don't blame anybody to rostering. It's probably one of the most difficult thing you can imagine. Um, you know, labor cost as well here is quite quite high comparing to any part I've been in. I've been to China, Dubai, I've been to a lot of other countries. You know, we they don't face with the same kind of challenges we're facing as well. From a cost and of labor perspective, really, right? Cost of labor perspective, but not just that, even workforce competitiveness doesn't really exist in our market. Uh, we don't have a lot of workforce that you can choose from. This episode is proudly brought to you by Mapper Forwards Workshop. It's time to become a coffee consultant. Learn how to diversify your revenue streams and create freedom from your day job while saying goodbye to that alarm clock forever by becoming a consultant within the coffee industry or directly to consumers who have shifted towards home brewing and home roasting. Protect your income from challenging times in the coffee value chain by taking this course today. Go to mapperforward.coffee forward slash workshops or click the link in the show notes for details. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward, friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and this is episode one of a new five-part series with the esteemed Noah Adra from Stitch Coffee in Sydney, Australia. Noah, welcome back to the podcast for like the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, I don't know how many times now. <laughs> Can't be more excited than this, but yes, thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. <laughs> it, the pleasure is mine, sir. Um, we are in a very interesting time in uh, the history of our industry, and I've got some shit that I want to talk about. Uh, and you're my human to bring on the podcast when I want to have conversations about stuff that I don't understand and that I want to explore. Um, but also, you're in the Australian coffee industry, and there's some really, really interesting stuff that's going on in the Australian coffee industry. And so in this series, we're going to be talking about the state of the Australian coffee industry right now. The Australian coffee industry seems to be a leading indicator for what happens in the rest of the world. And with the um, interesting things that are happening in the economy and on a global level right now, I thought that might be interesting for us to discuss. So... Let's start off with, because there are a lot of new people listening to the podcast these days. So um, for anyone who hasn't had the pleasure of meeting you on the podcast before, can you give us a quick rundown of what you do? Yes. So my name is Nawar. Um, I run uh, two companies side by side. I've got a co-roasting space that we call it uh, Iker, uh, used to be known as CRS. Um, and at the same time I run stitch coffee, uh, roasters, uh, which is a brand we have online, we have retail stores and we do wholesale. Um, and at the same time I do manufacturing of drip bag and steep bag in, in, um, in, in Australia. Uh, yeah, we do, we do a few things with that way. Mm. Stitch is my favorite coffee brand in the world for a lot of reasons. It's the best coffee, I think, the way that it's roasted, prepared, and um, presented as a product uh, by far of any brand in the world. Uh, also, the branding, I've seen this brand evolve from the birth of it. So I've had the honor of watching that. And the things that you have done with this brand um, and growing as an owner is just something remarkable. Uh, makes me very proud of you, <clears throat> but also the way that I have seen you show up as a business owner, as the industry has changed so much over the past, let's say, 10 years, um, means that having this conversation with you is probably the best person I, that I could have this conversation with. If we start this conversation at the perspective of a global level, Right. So this episode, we're going to have a conversation about the state of coffee in 2024. And then in the next episode, we're going to talk about more specifically what's going on in Australia. Because would you agree that this is a really unique time in the history of our industry? Yeah, I think uh, I think we've never really seen so many changes so quickly. And I think we had to really mm. adapt much faster than than before like a um, few years back probably uh the sea market was a lot more stable you know you, the the aussie dollar was kind of fluctuate a little bit here and there mm. 
Um, and you could tell, you know, the coffee that we bought for like four or five years was always in the same or even even six years in a row was literally the same price right. throughout. And then, you know, COVID came first year, staying in here, third year, boom. <laughs> and, and, and now we're living in a world where like you really don't know where you're at anymore. You can't really, first of all, you can't forecast is very hard to forecast. It's very hard to roster people. Like you really don't know when you're going to be busy. Wow. You know, like you really don't know when you're going to have just pack of people coming out of nowhere. And then the next day there's nobody, right? Uh, <clears throat> it's really confusing uh, to run a coffee shop or a brand or anything because, you know, you see shifts in people uh, buying habits. So coffee, they're not buying a lot in the cafe. They're drinking it more at home. Or, you know, you can see every every office is now, they have a coffee machine and everybody mm. just pressing pressing it and putting like, you know, one sugar in it or whatever they're doing in, in that space. But you can see that it's really becoming much more and more difficult. And earlier on, we always thought, you know, coffee bring people into your coffee shop. Mm -hmm. But I think right now it's changed a little bit. It become food is more essential than than coffee. You know, like wow. we tried to focus on coffee a lot, but then when we changed a little bit the menu, we saw that you know people it just shifted. Like the numbers shifted the way uh, it was maybe fifteen percent kitchen. Now the kitchen has almost taken over the coffee. It's wow. very, it's very difficult to really understand what's going on. Uh, it's hard. I don't blame anybody to rostering. It's probably one of the most difficult thing you can imagine. Um, you know, labor costs as well here is quite, quite high comparing to any part I've been in. I've been to China, Dubai. I've been to a lot of other countries. You know, we, they don't face with the same kind of challenges we're facing as well. From a cost and of labor perspective, really, right? Cost of labor perspective, but not just that, even workforce competitiveness doesn't really exist in our market. Uh, we don't have a lot of workforce that you can choose from, you mm -hmm. know, so you're really, really limited in, in what you can do and can't do. Um, you are very limited in your hiring uh, strategy. You know, sometimes you can wait, but doesn't mean you're going to get the perfect person. Like these days, you, you're you just looking for, can I train them? Are they willing? Are they are they ready? Like, you know, you're going to spend a lot more time on training than ever before, you mm -hmm. know, before you might be able to see baristas shifting around and, you know, to get somebody who has two or three years experience was maybe a little bit uh, easier than what it is today, but all those things really playing a very big pressure on small business owners, especially most of the cafe industry. You know, a lot of it is run by small businesses. Obviously, there's big roasters, there's big companies out there. Uh, but here, we all small, small people, not small people, but small business owners where you have limited resources. You know, yep. you really don't have time to lift your head up and, and look beyond the counter sometimes. You know, sometimes I don't, I like, Sometimes when, when you're in it, you're in it. You know, you try to put system and procedures, but you're working on the ground all the time. It's very mm -hmm. hard. It's very stressful, you know, and and that's really, really um, impacting a lot um, the um, the way we are operating and the way we are approaching every, each and every challenge. You tell, know? Me, tell me um, something uh, on that. First of all, people significantly underestimate the stress of being a small business owner. Big time. <laughs> right? <Huge. laughs> like people come into the, into our industry thinking it's all about muffins and espresso. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, it's not um, glamorous. Uh... <laughs> at all. <laughs> Second of all, I want to ask you kind of a, a more um, a numbers-driven question. When you, let's say five years ago, right? What percentage of revenue do you, do you think, or if you can cast back, what percentage of revenue was labor? Five years ago, I remember we, you know, we always 
it used to be around the 30-ish, 30 to 35. Right. Everyone used to super. say that. Right. Everyone used to that, say, if, keep that your labor costs around. kind of the bracket. Like if you do 28, you're like, you're doing yeah. a really, really good job. Even even 35 was considered a lot. Like it wasn't, you know, because the rent back then was, you know, less than 10%. So your cost, the, the thing is, it's not just labor. It's a combination of the three big factors. Which is the rent, very high cost of goods. So the cost of goods, they're not twenties anymore. No, they're they're 30s. closer to thirty-two, and in some cases, it depends how serious you are and have what kind of you know, like how proud you are of that particular product to be presented to your customer. It's gonna cost you sometimes to forty percent, mm. or thirty-eight, or thirty-seven. Um, and plus, you got the rent that was considered below 10. That is good. Now it's however between 12 and 15. It depends. So if you really started looking at it, it becomes, you know, these days, most of people are hovering. And if you're, you know, doing well, and obviously you're working there, but you're looking at 5%, you know, uh, comparing to 15 and 20 mm-hmm. in the past where you could easily do three, four cups a day by same customer. Uh, now it's one cup and buy a, be- a bag to make it at home or, or, you know, they might have a cup in the morning and, and most, of, most of the afternoon at, in the office. And there's still people not fully back. You know, you still have that four and one day like at home now. Yeah. If there is a public holiday, see you later. You're not going to see anybody, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's areas that actually don't... Uh, Ex- like uh, it used to be pumped with 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 coffee with sorry not coffee with a lot of office people, and right now these areas don't even have anyone coming back as in mm. all the office that's gonna left left the building altogether, you know. So there's a there's a lot of things going on, and not because shifting. it's not happening. Yeah, it's, it's shifting, but rapid, mm. right? So it's not allowing you the time to cope, to think, to rethink, to redo, you know, it's just going, it's, it's just boom, 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 boom. And you're like, okay, well, I fixed this. Oh, damn, there's another thing now here, now there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely a lot more challenging and um, very erratic and it's very hard to comprehend everything because it's re- overwhelming, I think is the right word. Um, at, at this stage and you really need to have like we, we are struggling like you know we, we open we had a cafe that was nice and not that busy and then we opened another one it's like bang what the hell is yeah. going on here and uh, it's a struggle to actually you know kind of go from here to like boom we were 20 people to 40 people mm-hmm. uh, okay what are the systems how do we make it better uh, how do we adjust how do we fix this how do we do that you know, especially when you're not doing the regular hours where you only, you know, most of cafes here open seven, shut three, you know, which is kind of easy to work around that. Mm-hmm. But when you start to go seven till five, it become a very different operation altogether, you know? Yeah, that's two because, shifts now, right? Because 38 hours a week, because, yep. you know, you only have limited things and, and that, so it's, and you don't have, competitive labor force uh and that is something we need to um you know really think about it a lot before you open anything or or think about it and this is kind of the big challenge and we can see a lot of restaurant kind of let go the idea a lot of very high-end restaurants like kind of shut down as well you can see that there's a lot more lease sign i'm not here to bring gloom or, or anything like that we're talking not, about the reality of the situation from. right like that's that's what's necessary right now is this is not about doom and gloom or anything like that and folks i i want to give you some feedback um from the series that i did with madeline about um well we talked about what happened at sea the number one comment that we got back from people was thank you i thought i was the only person that was was in crisis that was really a jarring to me to hear that because uh there is a lot of people who are experiencing uh, 
challenging time. But because we're not all talking to each other about it, we think that we're the only ones that are experiencing it. Well, the opposite of that is if I know that I'm in crisis and Noah and I know that Noah is in crisis and we start talking about it immediately we can work towards solutions and supporting each other and that's where the positive element of this story comes in this is not about identifying what's wrong with everything this is about mm. being real about it so that we can m- move fast forward directly to solutions we don't need to sit in the doom and gloom. We need to identify what the problem is and start working towards solutions. If we're ignoring what's going on, we're all fucked. Yeah. That's it. So I want to just finish off my question, if that's okay, about the labor. So if if um, I understand you correctly, labor from where you were sitting was the sweet spot was around 30%. 28 was good. 32 was on the high side, right? Or 35, 35. was on the high side. Right? Would you say that now? Where would you say labor is? Forty-two. Fuck. Yeah, for, forty to forty-two. Yeah, because because work covers triple that work. Thing is, you're not just calculating labor. You have to you do know? superannuation, or yeah. that's four hundred one k for whoever's listening. And work covers very very expensive right. these days. It went up by like three times. So. And and why it's important for people to hear stuff like this is because if they if if they have other people that are telling them you should be running and there are a lot of consultants out there that are talking this shit that are saying you should be running your labor at twenty percent and they can't get their labor anywhere near twenty percent and they can't even get it anywhere near thirty percent. They think they're doing something wrong. But when I speak to people again and again and again, no one's able to get their labor lower than 40%. You can't. You can't. You can't. Even here in Dubai, where labor, unfortunately, is a lot cheaper than it is in most countries, they double, they look, the clients here, they want their coffee right now. So from the time they order to the time they get their V60, which is what the, you know, is, you know, everyone drinks V60 here, they want their coffee quickly. So you have to double your labor force to make that happen. It's still a burden on the business. Yeah, and, you know, I'm, I'm talking from a perspective. We have Uber Milk. You have, you know, yeah. Wally. We've got the Quinston. We've got all the grind by weight. Uh, coffee grinders, you know, like we do whatever. It, it's almost a semi-automatic. Yeah, operation. Uh, operation, man. And, and it's still quite difficult because you know we, we're using quality we're using jersey milk mm-hmm. we're using you know oatly's or you know the milk lab almond or all those companies where we're choosing the best ingredients that goes with I, even i'm a coffee roaster myself which give me that little advantage in terms of the cost of goods of the coffee because mm-hmm. you know we're manufacturing from the ground up uh, um, we're still facing you know other other um, challenges when it comes to uh, those those type of uh, operation, you know, and and mm-hmm. how do how do we go by it? And that, again, the, the issue is not that. You, yeah, okay, we can drop the labor. One day could be thirty eight. The next day, you're hoping is gonna be busy because last week was busy or the week before. Right. <laughs> And then, and then the busy normal busy day is not busy anymore, so it's it's quite confusing. And the day you put the labor down, you get like it's a the busy highest day. sales of that day, <laughs> yeah. you know. So and your staff hate like, you. <laughs> yeah, and you can't really you can't look at a roster every three months, you know. It just does not make sense because you know it's like really it's like almost a freaking uh, you know an exchange. Uh, um, rate just keep going up and down like yeah, you wow. really don't know what to do and, and that's you really like the biggest investment is training people and and not many people has that type of you know time mm. you know because you experience to train them yeah they're gonna be within the working hours how are you gonna yeah you can't train someone can't within the working hours after hours and you're gonna get people to cover them up and like it's it's hard and if you're a barista that's listening to this or a coffee roaster that's listening to this, this is going to give you some insight into 
why it's just not so easy to pay you more. <laughs> like these are le- these are legitimate challenges that every single business owner is facing around the world right now. And so when you're coming to a business owner saying, but look, they're only paying us this much. They're paying you what they're paying you and they're still struggling every single month to pay the bills. It, it, so exactly. I hope, I hope that the value that these kinds of conversations brings to people, not just business owners, but to employees who are hoping to one day open their own business, this gives you the insight into how do you prepare so that you can be a business owner, but also how can you have some empathy for the people that you're working for right now and work together so that you can make this business survive longer so that you're both bearing the fruits of what ends up happening from that. So in the next episode, folks, we're going to be talking about specifically the Aussie coffee scene because it's usually a lead indicator of what's going to happen in coffee industries around the world. However, this is a very unique moment in the history of our industry and you can be sure as shit that we won't know anything about what happens next, but we're going to have a try and have a conversation about it. So please join us for for that. Peace, love and peanut butter. Have an amazing rest of your day. I really hope you enjoyed this episode, friends. Please don't forget to show us some love by subscribing, liking, commenting, and most of all, sharing this podcast with your friends. Check the show notes for links, including our sponsors and our Patreon. And stay tuned for more great conversations on the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward.